Those password mega breaches did not include Dropbox, Mitsubishi Outlander Wi-Fi hack, TeamViewer, adding security checks, and Zuck was using bad passwords. All that and more coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I'm Patrick Norton and this is ThreatWire for June 7th, 2016. Your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. Thanks to all our patrons at patreon.com slash threatwire. You, right there, you, you make the show possible. 500 million, that is a pretty big number. That's how many passwords and usernames were filched from LinkedIn, MySpace, and Tumblr in the past few weeks, or at least made publicly. Dropbox.com, however, did not have a breach, but says Krebs on security, Quote, LifeLock and several other identity theft protection firms erroneously alerted their customers to a breach at cloud storage giant Dropbox, an incident that reportedly exposed some 73 million usernames and passwords. Wow, the 73 million usernames and passwords, actually that data came from Tumblr. Side note, go make sure your Tumblr, your LinkedIn, and or MySpace password doesn't match any of your current passwords for any service you use online. Hit pause, the video will be here when you get back. If you're not sure how to use that, uh, or if you're not sure how to figure that out, you really should be running a password manager that does a security audit because it'll help you figure out that you don't have any matching passwords, which is a big deal. You'll pick up on that this week. In any case, Krebs did some sweet reporting, first tracking down CSID, that's the identity protection firm that was pointing the finger at Dropbox, and then asking them how they knew, which basically accounts to them listening to a guy named Worm on Twitter. Apparently he's been accurate in the past, and Worm said it was Dropbox and linked to a file that actually CSID couldn't verify the origins of, but that Worm claimed was the passwords from the Dropbox. Now Krebs points out they could have simply attempted to sign up for an account using an email addresses from the data, or you know, several different email addresses attempting several different account signups. He goes into the whole process explicitly in how to tell data leaks from publicity stunts, because most online services do not use or do not allow two different user accounts to have the same email address. So attempting to sign up for an account using an email address in a claimed leak dump is an effective way to test leak claims. This is good, right? So in any case, the article Dropbox smeared in week of mega breaches includes some great insight from Flashpoint's Director of Security Research, that's Allison Nixon. Uh, she was the inspiration for that article about data leaks and publicity stunts. She talks about automating threat intel and the need for human skepticism, which is hard to code into AI. It's a good read. A link is in the show notes right down there. Okay, I am sure some cars with Wi-Fi built in are secure, but the folks at Pentest Partners found out that the security on Mitsubishi's Outlander PHEV Hybrid, which uses a mobile app to log into the car directly over Wi-Fi instead of connecting to a GSM module on the car via the a web service or the cloud, uh, well, the Mitsubishi, not so secure. They uh, cracked the pre-shared Wi-Fi key in a few days, used Wiggle.net to track and locate Outlander PHEVs by their SSIDs all over Great Britain. Quote, then we started a man in the middle and sniffed the Wi-Fi connection. This is where it got interesting. Now, interesting includes things like turning on features like AC to drain the battery, turning the lights on and off, and hey, <laughs> disabling the uh, car's alarm system. Read the whole story, including Mitsubishi's decision to uh, respond to the security info only after pen test partners went to the BBC. A link is in the show notes. The Register UK says, quote, two new security checks in TeamViewer will warn users when a new device or location attempts to log into their TeamViewer account and remotely manage any computers connected to it and will raise an alert if suspicious activity is detected. What? Well, <laughs> this is ugly, people. A rash of TeamViewer users have complained that their desktops have been breached, banking sites accessed, money stolen, internet orders placed. Team viewer not so hot apparently on the uh, the uh, the customer service on this one. They're basically saying problems not our servers, but the victims of the attacks had reused their Team Viewer login passwords on other websites that have been breached, such as LinkedIn and Tumblr. Did I mention passwords being a theme this week? That said, some victims claim they not only were not using recycled passwords, but were using two-factor authentication. Side note: Mark Zuckerberg's Twitter and Pinterest passwords, well, his accounts were hacked into because uh, his passwords, da, 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 as in D-A, 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 writes the registers John Layden, uh, were the same as the ones he used for uh, LinkedIn, or they were found in the LinkedIn password collection. Uh, Mr. Zuckerberg's Facebook account was not breached, presumably it had a considerably better password, and I mentioned it before, passwords. Go change them, people. Check them out right now. Before we go, The Intercept pretty much sums it up in the title. Quote, FBI kept demanding email records despite DOJ saying it needed a warrant. By the way, the DOJ said that back in 2008. 
uh, Director Comfey's working very hard on the Hill to make warrantless requests for electronic communication transaction records, uh, well, warrantless. That's, of course, the same kind of info they've been demanding for years and apparently keep demanding despite the DOJ ruling and saying, uh-uh, no. Props to Yahoo for making this public, which they did legally after being released from their gag order last week. Normally, this is the part of the video where I tell you that we are grateful for everyone that supports ThreatWire by patreon.com slash ThreatWire. And while I am grateful, Shannon and Darren are too, because you keep the show going ad-free, I'm going to ask for your help in a slightly different way this week. Our sister show, Hack5, is up for a podcast award in the technology category, but the only way Hack5 can win is if you vote at podcastawards.com. you got to find the technology section, click on a button, then confirm your vote. If it sounds like too much to remember, our friends at the Diamond Club have all the info at Hatting the System. The URL for that is hat.t2.eu. They got a whole slate of awesomeness you can check out, including the epic We Have Concerns, Cord Killers, No Agenda, had a bunch of podcasts I didn't know about until I hit the page and found out that they are good stuff. So hat.t2t2.eu, because your vote can help make Hack5 a winner. As always, you can find all our episodes, links to our social networks, and other ways to contribute over at threatwire.net. And people, don't forget to change your passwords. Cover your hand when you're typing in a pin, which I guess would be covering when you're typing in a pin. Back up your data and do yourself a favor and do us a favor. Vote for Hack 5. With that, I'm Patrick Norton, and I'll see you on the internet.